Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes, and today I'm going to talk about Dan Price, Gravity Payments, and his initiative to pay his employees $70,000 per year as the base pay for all of his staff. And so I'm going to give some context, I'm going to give my opinions on it. A lot of people have asked me because we have created, at Augusta Lawn Care, we have 50 locations around North America, and we have a, a system that we call P4P, which is pay for performance, which basically means the harder you work, the more money you make, which is almost the opposite of the kind of incentive way that Dan would look at uh, compensation. That is, we're going to give just everyone a really, really good base pay and that's it. So I'm going to talk about it today because several people have asked and I want to clarify first and say that I really like this Dan Price guy. I I've followed him for a very long time for a couple reasons. One, he's in Seattle, which is only an hour and a half or so from where I live. Uh, and also because I feel it's a really good discussion uh, and I'm not opposed to it. Um, I know my, my employees watch this video and I'm okay with that. Um, I'm okay with bringing up hard topics and discussion. I don't think that I might disagree with, um, ethically, morally, etc. but I think people are just, they're going to politicize everything. And some people already will make a decision on whether or not the floor or the base pay should be $70,000 for their employees immediately. They'll call it socialism or whatever. And maybe it is. That's fine, um, but they don't ever actually start thinking about how would this logistically work in my business. And I think that sort of closed off mentality is what leads so many business owners to going out of business because we don't ever actually take other people's opinion, and other people's opinions and ideas about our business or opposing ideas to our business, and try to get the best ideas from them. And how can we mold our opinions to actually make the business better? And so, I want to clarify first: like I don't agree with how uh, this sort of compensation method works. And I am very much a, through and through a capitalist, right? So obviously it's going to not, go, it's going to go against the grain for me. But that does not mean that there should be not be a conversation around, is this a good way of paying your employees? And that is just, hey, pay as, as high of a base pay as possible. And, you know, even if it seems like it's outrageous at the expense of short-term profit for long-term everyone's well-being. And so I'm going to explain today why I feel like uh, it's not going to be a good model for most small business owners. And I think the reason I'm, I'm bringing this balance is because there's a few owners that I've actually talked to recently that have tried this and had to recoil this idea of paying a high, high salary to their employees. And I think it's because there is some misinformation because this story has got so much attention from mainstream media that doesn't share the whole story. And Dan has shared the whole story. He talks a lot about it uh, in books and interviews, etc. And I think it's a good reminder that you got to take everything in context. So let me get a little bit of context because you know, this happened in 2015, but Gravity Payments was a fairly big sized company by that time. They had 120 employees. What's really interesting is I actually worked for another company when I was really young uh, doing credit card processing that was a quote unquote competitor of Gravity Payments. And the ca credit card processing industry is made up of a lot of, it's very segmented, it's very fragmented. There's lots of players and Gravity is one of them and they had 120 employees in 2015 and Dan Price, the owner, the founder, decided, hey, we're going to pay everyone $70,000 as a flat base salary. doesn't matter if you're the CEO or if you're just getting started, $70,000 salary. And so I'm going to talk about why I don't think that works and I'm also going to, uh, wanted to preface it by saying I think Dan's a great guy. I think Gravity Payments is an awesome business. I've actually, I've, as someone who competed against them, I think they're a great business. Uh, they do great things by their customers, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to explain why be, this is not going to work, in my opinion, for a lot of other small businesses, uh, because I have seen already two, two owners try this, have to recoil, and they lost the, the entire staff because it's extremely demoralizing to pull back that type of pay, as well as destabilizing to people when you as the founder make such a massive statement, and then you have to retract it. It just shows that you haven't thought things through. So let me kind of, you know, show the, the pros and the cons here. So I think the, the biggest thing for me is it demotivates the higher performers and attracts the lowest performers. Uh, and that, this is not necessarily the case all the time in terms of the traction part. Uh, there's going to be people that are attracted to the, that mentality and that, so, uh, that kind of social network that is created inside of the organization and that culture. Uh, and that could be a high performer. However, when it comes to someone that is, let's say for example, in 2015, there was someone at Gravity Payments making 
okay? And they're one of the highest performers there. They do great at sales. They're growing the company, et cetera. They, they work late, they work hard, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, they're gone. They're going to go from 72 down to 70, so a little haircut on, on pay. But then their colleague who just got started is going to go from 40,000 all the way up to $70,000. And that person, you know, takes naps at, at lunchtime. Uh, half the time doesn't even do work as talking, chatting, you know, completely not engaged in their work. Doesn't care about the customers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yet I'm making the same amount of money as them. I find I would leave. I'd be, it'd be extremely demotivating to me. Now, that being said, again, the, the, the thing you have to remember is that's because I'm motivated by extrinsic things like money, like growing a business, like being able to invest. Those are things that are important to me. If I wasn't that way, that would potentially not affect how I looked at my place of work. If I showed up and I got a haircut in my pay, but everyone else below me, even though they didn't perform as well as me, didn't produce as much as me, got just as much pay as me, Maybe I wouldn't care if, if money was not important to me. Uh, I feel like for most people it is, and especially for people who are high performers that were making 80, 90, 100,000, and now they're brought down while everyone else below them is brought up. And you know, is that equal equality? Well, not if the person that's working 80, you know, doing 80, 90,000 dollars a year is also working 60 hours a week on the weekends, figuring things out, coming up with creative solutions and ideas, and not just doing busy work. So uh, I think the first thing is top talent would leave and it'd be demotivating, okay? Uh, a second thing that we wanna keep in mind when it comes to this, this article and, and the, this whole story with Gravity Payments is $70,000 in Seattle is actually not very high. If you actually take that cost of living in Seattle and compare it to like Midwest somewhere, you literally might be the equivalent of paying someone $40,000 in the Midwest or even less because in Seattle, your rent for a studio or a one bedroom apartment might be $3,000 a month. So that has to be brought into context when people say, oh, $70,000 is their base pay. Yeah, in the middle of Seattle, the middle downtown of Seattle is where their headquarters are at. So again, keep that in mind. Uh, and as well as the fact that you got to look at the industry, and this is why I'm making this video, is because I think people hear that that story, and I've already seen people in lawn care and landscaping be like, "Oh, should we do that? Like, should we go and pay our guys like thirty dollars an hour?" And I think it's it's important to realize what the industry is, and and the reason I say that is because, for example, lawn care landscaping, it's based upon labor, which means I input labor and I get money from a customer. It's it's very much based upon variable costs, which is labor. I put my labor in variable cost and I get money out. With credit card processing is not that way. You do not have as much variable expenses, mostly fixed expenses in terms of the regulation requirements that you have to set up as a payment processor, uh, the sales team, the tech team, uh, et cetera. There is not much variable cost. In other words, if one of my clients as a payment processor, which again, I was fully, I, I worked in this industry. If one of my payment, my, my customers that do, does payment processing through me goes from, uh, a small little business that does 100,000 and next year does 10 million, I don't really have to do any more work. There's no more cost to me. And so in a lot of people are saying, oh, he's tripled in business in the past since 2015 when he uh, did this, uh, you know, this uh, increased everyone's pay to 70,000. So two things, one, massive PR. The amount of PR that they've gotten for this is worth hundreds, not hundreds, probably tens of millions of dollars in PR that all these news articles and videos and interviews and books that have been read about them. And that brings in press. And then there's business owners that are willing to pay a premium price for their processing in order to have gravity as their processor. So first of all is, is the PR side. The second thing is realize that their industry is not, labor is not a variable cost. It's much more fixed. So, which means, again, I can have one employee, all my customers can double their business, and I don't need to double my staff, all right? And I know that because they've tripled in business, but they've gone from 120 employees to 200 employees. So, they didn't have to go to 360 employees in order to take on that tripling of revenue, okay? So, you've got to keep in mind when it comes to most small businesses, we have a very linear path between variable costs, which is labor, and our revenue, and so if our revenue goes up and we sell more lawns and we sell more work, guess what? We're going to need more labor. And so I think it's, it's important to keep in mind, I think creatives and highly technical work, this type of model would actually do well. Uh, and I think that when it comes to creative things, 
you know, video, creating websites, a technology, this type of model might work a lot better in comparison to more of a labor position where it's very, in, it is very much a, a variable cost, which is very, as I sell more jobs and I sell more work, more labor is required. Things like sales, this is, again, another thing I think would do great in a sales environment where you raise the floor because it just gets everyone motivated to just work well and it creates a great culture. But again, a salesperson, if I go sell more of whatever I'm doing and I don't have to have more labor, I don't have to input more costs, then that's, this model will work. But when it comes to lawn care, landscaping, cleaning, and a lot of home service type businesses like I'm in, the more we sell, the more labor is required. So we can't just triple our business and add 20% in, in employees. We can't do that. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, also, this is a really good discussion, I think, to think about because I very much care about where the future of the employees that I hire are going to be in 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And in my mind, I feel like I would rather remove the ceiling than just raise the floor. And I feel like by having a really good base pay, what you do is you raise the floor, but you kind of, you, you basically, like in this case, they put a f the top. You can't make more than 70,000. Like the CEO makes 70,000. Everyone makes 70,000. So I feel like what you've done is you've raised the floor. Great. That's where they're getting a lot of their press. But what we're not talking about is the fact that they've brought the ceiling down. And in my opinion, and again, this is going to be from my value set of wanting to achieve more and go and be an overachiever. And I like to work with those type of people. And so I would rather, again, just my value set, remove the ceiling, say, look, you can make a ton of money here. You can grow with this company. You can, you can go start your own business. You can learn more. You can become a manager. Take the information you got here and go learn and do something bigger. Uh, I'd rather do that than say, I'm just going to give you five, 10, $20 more an hour. Like I just don't feel like it's going to help them as much because when they leave my place of work, if I haven't given them skills, if I haven't given them information, if I haven't given them experience to, to warrant the raising of the floor, they're not going to actually have to get, take a pay cut and go get a job somewhere else. Because everyone else will be like, well, why were you getting that much money? Like your skill set, the, the market demands a much lower price per hour or, or salary, and we're not going to pay you that. So I, in my opinion, for me, I would rather remove the ceiling, give a lot of information, education, give them a place to grow their career, whether it be with us or going somewhere else and taking those skill set, taking the education and going and growing and succeeding far into the stratosphere. i I would prefer that. I'd rather have that. And again, it's because of my value system. Uh, another thing is I, I'd be really interested because I haven't seen this actually in, in firsthand, but I would imagine uh, that it doesn't work as well with starting and growing businesses as compared to a company that is more established and it has a much more consistent profit margin. Okay. Because it's great to be like, okay, I'm going to give a bunch of money to my employees. But if you're growing, you just sucked out all the profit from the business and now you don't have anything that you can't grow. You can't expand. And so I feel like this kind of model might work better once a company is established. And if you look back, like they were already in business for quite a few years before 2015. It wasn't like, okay, we're going to start this business and we're going to have everyone at $70,000 per year for revenue, uh, for their, their income. That's not what happened. And a lot of times the small business owners hearing the story like, oh, I should do that. And they're like their second year of business and they, they do it and all their profit is gone and they have nothing to grow the business on. They have nothing to put cash reserves away for things like, you know, a, a COVID outbreak happening and then the needing to draw into cash reserves. And so I think it's just, I wanted to bring some context as to who should be doing this type of model. In my opinion, more of creative types, in industries, this would do well, like software where you can make it once and then sell it a hundred times and you don't have to input more labor, more labor's type positions, labor's types industries where you sell more, you therefore need more labor and you need more input costs. I don't feel like it's going to work. I also don't feel like it's going to work well in an environment where you're wanting people to really go for it. And I don't mean just be good team players. I mean, you if you enjoy working with people who just are savage when it comes to growth and expansion and building their career, which I love those type of people, um, this is going to be extremely demotivating to them to get paid the exact same amount as someone just getting started, extremely junior, and not moving the needle for the business at all, while the other person is making strategic moves, working way longer hours, etc. Uh, and I think the last thing is, 
I do not think this is going to work for a small business that's just getting started or trying to grow their business. If you've got to the point of the business is where you at, want it to be at in terms of profit, revenue, you don't want it to grow anymore, and you're really harvesting the, the fruits of that business, kind of like a little plant, you can't start picking apples off of it and like, oh, we're going to give this away to the employees and we're going to give this away. Like, you can't do it when it's young. As the, as the business grows, as the plant grows and you get fruit from it, that's when you can start being more generous. Like, we only instituted profit chain the past few years. Before that, there was no profits to really be had and any profits that were had were thrown into the business to get it to the point to allow that bush, allow that apple tree to grow to the point where there was actual fruits. And I think a lot of times people fail to realize that you've got to let the business grow to the point where there's actually really good profits, where there is consistency. And then you can take those profits and if you want to give them to employees or to charity or to good causes. But we always, so oftentimes like second and third year, we're like trying to take fruit off this little tiny plant that has a little bud. And it's like, look, let the business grow. Keep putting the profits back in the business. Let it grow. Water it. Give it some care. Let it strengthen itself. Give it some, you know, better branches, deeper roots. And then you can start taking the fruit and giving it away. So I think those are the, the kind of the way I look at this. I think Dan's an awesome person and I think his intentions are absolutely fantastic. I think small business owners though are taking some of this out of context and thinking that this is a surefire way just to get massive engagement for their employees. And I've seen already two two businesses go out, not go out of business, I shouldn't say that, uh, but they have lost their team uh, and the culture and the morale is completely wiped out uh, because they institute this way too soon in the business or in an industry that it just is not going to work for uh, because the, the as they grew, they need more input costs. So uh, lots of things to think about. Just I think it's a great discussion. I think people politicize this way too quickly without just debating it. And even if you disagree with it, something, I think it's great to think about it, think about it from their point of view, et cetera. So I think this would work great in some other different types of cultures, different types of owners and founders that weren't trying to grow or expand, uh, people that didn't like for example, to work with uh, really type A people that were really trying to get ahead in life. Uh, so I think that's just my opinion. So Mike Andes, we'll see you tomorrow.